Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Infinity, and this is Magnetize Yourself, where we talk about life, love, spirituality, and of course, the law of attraction. In today's video, I am going to be doing a collective reading video. So I'm going to be reading into the energy of the divine feminine and divine masculine collective. Now, because these are energies that we're channeling into today, these could come in many different forms. They could be manifested in different forms in your life. Some of these messages might apply to your internal divine masculine and divine feminine because we all do have a balance of these energies within us. These messages could equally apply to some kind of external situation, connection, relationship, something in your life that represents these masculine and feminine energies in more of a physical material form. So as I always say, take these messages as they connect with you personally. And of course, only if they do connect with your intuition, because your intuition is really the compass of your life. And through these readings, it's really my goal to reconnect you with that intuitive knowing within yourself. So let's go ahead and get into the reading by shuffling the energy oracle cards deck. Right away, I have anxiety in the upright position and blossoming abundance in the reversed position. I also saw the tower card at the bottom of the deck of the traditional tarot right as I was beginning this reading and I heard that someone here could be going through a tower moment, some kind of a breaking point. I want to call it like a timeline split where there are these two paths, two options, and they're being pushed to make some kind of choice or change if they are going to align with the timeline that represents their heart's deepest desire is really what I'm getting here. And I feel a very dominant kind of masculine energy from this tower moment. So if you identify as the divine feminine here listening, you might find that there is a masculine connected to you who is going through a tower moment, who is with the deceit card reversed, realizing some type of truth that he's been ignoring or denying in the past. And I feel that this ignorance or denial of truth may have actually led to disconnect. I'm hearing it caused you to put your connection on more of a lower vibrational trajectory now, you Divine Feminine personally are aligning with this very high vibrational timeline for yourself and your life, but when I say that this connection or relationship feels like it ended up on a low vibrational timeline trajectory, I mean that although you personally, individually were aligning with this very high vibrational reality for yourself and your life, it feels like this connection, the connection that you shared with this person may have gotten very out of sorts in the physical world. In fact, you raising your vibration in this way, Divine Feminine, you aligning with that high vibrational energy that is in resonance with truth, with absolute truth and connection to truth is actually pulling this masculine vibrationally to face some type of truth. It's like putting the truth in his face is what I'm getting here. So I feel that for some of you, the truths that this masculine is being pushed to face could be about a literal external physical situation in his life that could have created some type of disconnect between you in the past. So for some of you, this could be what we refer to as a karmic situation, which could be a relationship or connection, but could also be anything that creates disconnect within a divine connection. 
And with thinking woman at the bottom of the deck, I feel that whatever this situation was for whoever I'm speaking to here, this was very painful in 3D for you, Divine Feminine, because you had this cognizance of the power of this divine connection, the potential, spiritually speaking, of the connection that you share to this masculine. But at the same time, there was very intense triggering and awareness that things were very out of sorts in the 3D world. I'm getting a name with the letter M. I heard the name Michael, which could be the Archangel Michael for some of you if you connect with angels. Do keep in mind, however, when I channel specific words, details, and pieces of information, these tend to be connected with specific people. So don't worry if these details don't resonate for you personally. I do have the community card up right. Okay, so we really need to read into this masculine's heart space because there are three really powerful cards kind of cycling through the heart space here of the masculine which tells me they're really in their feelings and also there's kind of a repetitiveness to what they're feeling. It's almost like they're feeling in a loop here, if that makes sense. So we have anxiety, them feeling really anxious about reflecting on the past of this connection, wondering what's going to happen in the future, but specifically what they're feeling anxious about is pointed to blossoming abundance reverse. So something that was uprooted before its time from their perspective perspective that they really want to replant. The number 333 is coming out here, so they may also be recognizing the spiritual nature of this connection or this feeling could be pushed by something divine surrounding them. So this could be their spirit guides, their higher self. It feels like there are highly spiritual forces at play here that are pushing the masculine into their feelings. With the community card, I feel that all of this, this anxiety over you and this connection, this feeling that something was uprooted too soon that held a lot of potential that they really desire to replant with you, all of this is pushing them to really want to connect physically because with the community card, I often see this as physical reconnection. And I feel I'm getting the word irresistible. Like this desire to physically reconnect is magnetic. It's intensely strong for them. So I wouldn't be surprised if this person has reached out recently wanting to make plans to see you in person, to travel with you, to open the door to some kind of physical reconnection here because I feel like that physicality of your reconnection is really on the mind of the masculine coming through this reading. I also have the number 444 and the happy family card in the reverse position. I feel that this represents the masculine here feeling triggered in the sacral chakra, which is the seat of intimacy and connection, particularly his abandonment wound and his fear of rejection is being triggered because quite simply, he sees that you divine feminine are no longer attached to the outcomes here with happy family reversed. You are going with the flow of your life. You're committing fully to living in the present moment, staying centered in the energy of your truth, and you're open to possibility here. And the masculine here is aware of that. For some of you, this could be speaking to the fact that the masculine's feeling a bit triggered in the sacral because he recognizes psychically, subconsciously, that you, Divine Feminine, are opening yourself to other options or opportunities. Now, of course, this will not be the case for all of you. This also could just be the masculine's perception here for some of you. So this may not actually be happening. You may or may not actually be physically connecting with or opening yourself to others energetically in this way. But I do sense like a door has opened in your mind where you are open to possibility. You're open to the idea of connecting with new people, moving forward with your life. You're really allowing the flow of your life to carry you rather than trying to push things into place and moving against that flow back when you were in that chasing energy as you may have been in the past. 
And for some reason, I'm getting the word panic, like this subconscious knowing that you are no longer attached to outcomes is really lighting a fire under this masculine that to his conscious 3D mind may actually feel like a sort of panic or a sort of again, an anxiety, a push to do something about it. And that is where I see this masculine's mind flipping to this desire to physically reconnect in some way. And if that is the case, I feel he wants to connect in person to show you something. Now, this will vary depending on your circumstances and situations, but I feel that for many of these masculines, this may be showing you that he's changed, showing you progress he's made in his life, or showing you... I'm hearing that I'm still the same person that you fell in love with or connected with in the beginning. Now, of course, take this as it resonates because although these energies that I channel are typically romantic in nature, these also could be platonic situations. Again, this could be an internal balance of energies at play here. But with the Envy card upright, this card comes up so frequently on the masculine's energy as I'm channeling into this reading. For some reason, I'm seeing someone wearing black, which of course can be a symbol of grief. When someone's grieving, they might wear a black veil traditionally or something along those lines. So I don't know if that connects with someone, but also it could be this energy of grief, almost like the masculine has been grieving a loss. This could be a loss literally in his life, but this also could be more symbolic and spiritual in nature. This could be him grieving past stages or phases of his life. I'm hearing that this could be leading to feelings of nostalgia. Divine Feminine, you've been picking up a lot of this grief through energetic transference. I saw the numbers 1155, so that could be connecting with someone. I feel that during this period of grief, the masculine was very stagnant with action in the reverse position. I see someone almost like stuck in a rut of their own feelings of grief or loss or sadness. This may even be affecting the general mental health of the masculine here as well, even if he is someone that does a good job hiding this. And I do sense divine feminine that this has impacted your energy also, that you've been feeling Feeling this as a kind of heaviness, even if it's not spoken with words, you may be psychically picking up on this very heavy, dense energy around this masculine that I, that I feel is really connected with the ego death that he's going through in connection with his ultimate spiritual awakening. For some reason, I'm hearing stay away like divine feminine. You may have felt guided to stay away or keep a distance from the physical form of this masculine as you are picking up on all of this heavy energy simply because you've been protecting your own peace, protecting these higher vibrational states that you've been shifting into. But when I hear stay away, this also could be the masculine's wounded inner child in a sense who tried to push you away, who is afraid of showing those raw, heavier aspects of himself and his life experience, who might try to hide those heavier experiences for fear of being rejected or abandoned. So I do see a potential inner child healing taking place here as well, where the masculine is being pushed to allow others into their true inner world rather than maintaining the mask. So in the extended version of the reading, I will be channeling more into why a masculine here wants to physically reconnect, because I do see that for many of these masculines, what they really want to say and communicate to you, because I do feel some of the masculines coming through here actually being somewhat guarded when it comes to communicating their true thoughts and feelings, but they are being pushed to open up that inner world more to you, Divine Feminine. So we will be tapping more into that inner world of this masculine in the extended Patreon reading. And the link to that extended reading is in the pinned comment and description box under this video. With man holding a heart reversed, I now feel we're shifting into your energy, Divine Feminine. You may have been perceiving a masculine in your life 
or people, situations in your life as not being reciprocated to you, not participating in a balanced way with you in the physical world in the past. I'm hearing giver. So you may have very much been a giver. You may have considered yourself in the past also to be a people pleaser, to be someone who felt the need to give and give and give to others and was not very much in her receptive energy in the past. I'm getting that though, you have this conscious recognition of these unbalanced dynamics and you're no longer willing to participate in them in the same way as you did in the past. I'm hearing inner strength, like you have developed such an inner strength about yourself, divine feminine, a kind of fortitude within that, yeah, with magician and the mirror upright represents this rebalancing that has taken place within yourself and your energy. The magician in the mirror is my number two twin flame card in the deck. So this could be a twin flame situation that you are dealing with. You may be someone who considers yourself to be on a twin flame path, but also this can represent the fact that you are balancing your internal divine masculine and divine feminine energies. You are recognizing that you have the ability to stand up for yourself, to be confident in yourself, to be self-honoring and self-supportive. And those are the most important themes I feel your spirit guides saying as you move forward in your life to hold the place you've come to here because you've come so far. You've built so much inner fortitude, inner strength. And I'm hearing that you may choose from that place of power to re-engage or reconnect with certain people in your life that you may have pulled your energy away from, that you may have taken some time apart from. Of course, this will not be for everyone. But for some of you, for example, there may be a friendship, a social situation that you took some time or space away from to really recenter yourself, to get connected to your inner truth, to build that sense of inner fortitude. And recently or in the near future, you may actually feel yourself re-inspired to connect with certain people or situations in your life that you may have pulled back from in the past. And I'm hearing your spirit guides say that if this is the case, Remember to always stay centered in that place you've established within yourself because, again, you've really established this connection to your inner power, your inner truth. You've become very self-supportive and self-respecting and self-honoring. And now many of you might feel guided to actually reopen yourself to the world in a sense. And again, this could be reopening parts of yourself to people from your past If that is the case as well, I'm getting this interesting message that you on this higher vibrational timeline may find that you begin aligning with new aspects and higher aspects, higher parts of people that are familiar from your past. So know that every connection and relationship has its own timelines. So depending on your energy and that person's energy, your relationship to others can align at different vibrational timelines, so to speak. So you have lower vibrational versions of relationships and higher vibrational versions of relationships, even with the same physical individuals in your life. Now, of course, that by no means means that you need to connect with any of these people because if someone isn't ready to connect with their own higher aspects, when you are at that high vibrational state of being, it may not be possible to forge that higher vibrational version of that relationship until that person chooses to align with some of those higher aspects of themselves. I'm seeing my guides show that it's almost like it's almost like an electric current with like two two conduits for the energy and you can be holding that electric current that high frequency for the highest vibrational version of a connection or relationship you could be like that outlet with this available electric current of energy but until that person comes in with the right plug that fits into that outlet in this metaphor 
there would be no exchanging of energy in the physical here. I know that's a bit of a strange metaphor, but what I'm seeing here is you are holding these high vibrational frequencies and you may have all of these people from your present, from your past, some of whom you've withdrawn your energy from, but you're holding space for the highest vibrational forms of all relationships in your life. And what this means is some people may not be able to plug in with you, so to speak, at that higher vibrational state of being at this present moment in time, but you're still holding the space for that. And they could connect with you at some later date in the future if they do choose to align more with some of their own high vibrational aspects and meet you up on that higher timeline, so to speak. Whereas others, again, may just simply be incapable at this moment of aligning at that higher frequency state of being. But know that you're still holding space for these others by being where you are, by staying in your power, by holding these higher frequency states of being. And trust that you're holding the space for others, even if it feels lonely at times. Trust that those who are ready to meet you on those higher timelines will not pass you by. They will connect with you or reconnect with you in the physical world. And many of you may be seeing this play out specifically when it comes to a masculine energy romantically or platonically from your past. Of course, this isn't limited to the masculine. You will see this with all forms of energies and people in your life. But for many of you, this is playing out as a dominant theme in a connection from your past that you may still have a lot of unconditional love for, that you may still in a sense be holding that space for, holding that frequency for, but at the same time, opening yourself to all possibilities, opening yourself to connecting within relationships or new potentials that could bring a lot of joy and happiness and peace and balance into your life, not keeping yourself closed off any longer out of fear that this one person or situation would never meet you where you are, but trusting the universe, trusting the timing of your life and that alignment process that does take place or that realignment process that could take place with certain people in your life that you may have created distance with, but might still be holding a lot of love for. I just keep hearing trust the process, which is of course something that divine feminines are hearing very often from their intuition, from their guides, from their higher self, which essentially are all connected, are all somewhat the same cosmic energy that is reminding us of who we truly are beneath all the levels and layers as this free flowing, high vibrational, spiritually connected being. And of course, right as I said that, we have the yin-yang card in the reverse position. So I heard twin flame, but also the word internal. So some of you may be considering yourself on a twin flame path, but you've discovered that at this phase of the journey, much of this twin flame experience is something happening within you internally. So certain things in the external world may look stagnant or static. There may even be, in many cases an external twin flame counterpart who is going through their own ego death, who is going through cutting off karmic situations in some cases, whatever the case is. And so you may have actually created distance in the physical from your twin flame or from the physical aspects of the twin flame relationship, which of course, when we use that word relationship, we mean the physical 3D aspects. But the connection, of course, is still there. And that internal aspect of the twin flame journey may be the most relevant aspect for you at this time. Again, this is connecting with that magician and the mirror card representing you, divine feminine, really balancing yourself out on the internal plane. And you are coming up most dominantly in this balance, this balancing out that's taking place as the angel of love, you are really becoming this powerful beacon of unconditional love. And I'm hearing that 
a lot of that illumination happening within you is coming through your commitment to the present moment. I know I said this earlier, but this is a powerful message coming through that you are no longer needing to figure things out through the mind, whether it's putting together pieces from the past or trying to plan things out into the future, you are trusting that present in the moment guidance. You are remaining connected to your power and your truth. You are making decisions from that centered place and being self-honoring, self-respecting and self-loving in everything you do. I'm hearing that this love energy is also profoundly rippling out and impacting more people around you than you may actually realize. This isn't just impacting particular masculine energies that you may be connected in with in the physical, whether this is a twin flame, a soulmate, a relationship in your life. This extends far beyond our traditional concept of love and relationship. Your unconditionally loving choices are, I'm hearing, illuminated people around you who are ready to embark on their own spiritual awakening or on their own internal healing process. I almost see you as like something, this being that ignites sparks within others and if that tender is there, if something is ready to catch fire, it will simply by being in your presence. And when I say catch fire, I mean catch fire in a spiritual sense. And of course, not everyone is ready to be illuminated spiritually, to become connected with their higher self, but you're always there generating these sparks of energy so that anyone connected in with you physically or energetically who is ready to wake up will begin that illumination process simply by being in proximity to you again in proximity not even necessarily physically but even just energetically anyone who's connected with you energetically in some way has the opportunity to be to be sparked by your powerful spiritual energy into this process of really reawakening their true selves internally and connecting more with that true self. And I feel like regardless, Divine Feminine, of what you are doing in this world, you are really beginning to wake up other people around you. You may not be seeing evidence of this yet, but if you aren't, you will see it more and more. I'm hearing you'll have people coming to you for advice, for wisdom, wanting to wanting to start a conversation about something, whether it's about reclaiming their personal power, whether it's about spiritual matters. I'm hearing you are like this wise oracle that others are going to be increasingly flocking to for advice, for guidance, just to be in your energy. And you do carry a very rare and powerful energy. And I'm getting also that for those of you who are desiring to attract or create more physical material abundance in your life, you are going to find that your energy is very powerful for attracting this kind of abundance. And you're going to see evidence of that increasingly because again, people want to be in your energy. They want, if you make products, for example, if you have services, products, whatever the case is, know that all of these things, whether it's media content you're creating online, songs you're writing, a book you're writing, whatever it is, it carries your soul signature within it. So it's not even really the product or the service that someone is buying. It is this piece of your energy or rather not really a piece because it doesn't take away from you, but a reflection of your energy. They're purchasing this powerful soul signature that you are infusing into everything that you are creating. I don't know who I'm connecting with there. Again, it may not be a literal purchase if you're not involved in business. This could just be representing others really wanting to engage with you, wanting to connect with you. And again, you're going to see increasing evidence of this. So in the extended version of the reading, I am going to be channeling more into your spirit guidance, Divine Feminines. So we will be having a conversation with your spirit guides, talking about this powerful place you've reached in your current life path, what you need to know about this place you're in now, and any messages you might need to know moving into the future. 
as well. So the link to the extended reading on Patreon is in the pinned comment and description box under this video. I have to tell you, as I was channeling into Divine Feminine, your purpose here, how you're living that purpose, how you're powerfully impacting others, someone came up as kind of watching you, either spiritually, if this isn't someone you've met yet, you have a soul contract with this person, they're going to come into your life if that's the case. This could be someone from your past, this could be the same energy as earlier, but someone is sensing you stepping into your power and i'm getting chills all over as i'm sharing this i this is a powerful energy this is i feel a masculine if this is connecting with you again this could be that person from your past this could be someone coming in but this carries a really powerful spiritual energy and the key about this person is they are someone who really admires you in your power and who is extremely attracted to you and increasingly attracted to you magnetically the more that you step into your true power it's like there's a direct correlation between you stepping into your power standing in your truth living that purpose and you attracting this person into your life so I am getting to the end of this reading, but in the extended version of the reading, I will be channeling more into this powerful spiritual energy coming through with this masculine who may be watching you in some sense, either literally or spiritually. So if you do feel guided to the extended reading, the link to that, of course, is in the pinned comment and description box under the video. I just saw the number 3131 for someone as well. So that may be connecting with you in some way, but I'm going to go ahead and close this first reading here with one final Rumi Oracle card. So the Rumi Oracle card here is the human gift. This is the number 17 card. I'm getting the numbers one and seven, maybe connecting with someone in different combinations. So I'm just going to share a little bit from the guidebook here. O oh heart, what is your excuse for all these blunders? Such loyalty is offered by the beloved, yet so much treason comes from you. Such kindness is offered by the beloved, yet so much defiance and resistance comes from you. Such grace is offered by the beloved, yet so much fault and failure comes for you, from you. Such attraction is offered by the beloved with sweetness and generosity, yet such jealousy comes from you with so much doubt and suspicion, Rumi. And the guidebook also says, Rise up now from your doubts and admonishment, and let your human self be loved. Even for all the doubt, you are still a cherished one of the great beloved and always shall be. Be kind to your heart. You may believe it to be weary from doubt and distrust, so much heartbreak and so many agonies, yet still it beats, still it persists with unquestioning allegiance to life. What a grand heart it is, this sacred heart of yours. How can it be worthy of anything other than tenderness, gratitude, acknowledgement, and appreciation? The perfection of your heart is that it loves still. Even if you try to stop it with some notion of self-protection from future hurt through fear and doubt, still it loves. It is perfection that it hopes even after despair, that it holds compassion even after experiences of fear. So then, what is there left to do but breathe the grandest sigh of relief and allow yourself the essential luxury of peace within? So then, Everything is all right, even if at some moments it seems not to be. Still, your heart beats in honor of life. The heart can be nurtured and coaxed into gentle acceptance of all that is, and the divine sight will become available to you. Wow, that feels like a beautiful place to close this first reading here on YouTube. If you are feeling connected to the reading and you do want to continue with me now on our extended Patreon reading, I will be leaving the link to that in the pinned comment and description box under the video. 
I would love to hear from you in the comments if anything from the reading connected with you in a personal way. Otherwise, I am sending you so much love, wishing you a beautiful day. Take care, and I will talk to you again in Wednesday's reading.